Welcome to Being Reintegrated. Uh, my name is Tim Wright. Uh, so, what happened recently is in the podcast, um, I've been talking on certain forums and people have been responding and, you know, we've gotten some good subscription. Um, and what happened is that we had ventured over into the realm of Reddit and uh i saw something amazing uh which i never saw before i'll tell everybody what it is it's just the framework of what happened so i guess in uh live vert uh uh which is the green book and you can find this in your version whether it's clayland or uh osborne which i really prefer the george court's french version because it has a uh, commentary, a three-volume commentary. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, Singular Dream is really a good, good representation of the whole Roqua element in the uh, Elucoan. And so what it is essentially is a, uh, a vision of an apprentice Roqua or a uh, associate Roqua who's uh, petitioning for the Roqua degree uh, and he's going through or he or she doesn't matter uh, is going through the process of uh, reintegration of the faculties um, into a receptivity so in this receptivity there's a few things that happen um, really, really good stuff. I mean, it's only two pages. Now, in the conversation, it was said this was written by Martinez. So, I didn't get much from George Quartz on the authorship of this portion of the Green Book. Um, but it is believed that uh, Grainville is the author of the Green Book. So, uh, you know, and... Ambulane himself, in one of the issues of uh, Saint Jacques, uh, was in, in French. It was a journal. Um, said that the Green Book was essentially a book for Roquois, um, and I have done some analysis on it, and it appears to be not a Roquois book, but an apprentice Roquois or uh, commander of the East. Uh, degree before you get to Roqua. So it teaches you all the operations that a Roqua would need to know, um, but it doesn't necessarily go all the way. Uh, but this vision goes all the way. So it's very, very important. Um, it gets you into a place of, uh, you know, I, I had arguments with people that about the holy guardian angel and the whole uh, bon compagnon, which is the good intellect uh, in the Elu Cohen system. And so this does go into that realm. Um, so it's really good. And, and I was very shocked when I read it. I was like, oh my God, here it is. Um, it's like somewhat of a dark night of the soul when you read it first. Um, you're supposed to go into the depths of despair. And then there's a vision. Uh, so in the seventh uh, actual degree of the initiation schema, which I learned from um, Dr. Louis Kaiser, um, who was a biblical scholar, so that's important to know too. Uh, Lewis uh, showed us that the seventh degree uh, from like the hermetic uh, tradition is the beatific uh, vision. So you have this beauty vision. And now in the uh, vision dream portion of Live Vert, uh, it goes into, you know, the the darkness of the soul starts. It's in a very sinuous kind of dark place. Uh, and that is, if you're following the exercises of being reintegrated, that is essentially the trauma body uh, using the mind to put out demonic presentations that affect the self. 
So it's, it's completely self-contained. And what happened is when this person was in a, in a sleepy, what uh, we call somnia ambulistic state, they became receptive to the uh, gnosis of this particular expression. So this dream wasn't just, you know, I had a nightmare and I'm done with it. Uh, the author, which like I said, I think is Grainville, uh, says that it went on for uh, ever. Uh, he, he kept this vision throughout his whole life. So it's super important to understand that this kind of stuff would not be available to the public. This is part of the breakthrough moment of the uh, commander of the East uh, turning into a Roqua. And it says, uh, I was for a few days in that most lonely place of Trifaven Wood. Now, this is not a term that is extant in Martinism or Alucoan language. So, it's a mystery of what the Trifaven Wood is. Maybe somebody more initiated than me needs to talk about it I don't know uh, so you know if I seem like a know-it-all I don't know what Trifaven Wood is however based on the description I can give you some hints at what I think it might be based on the commentary by George Quartz we're pretty sure what it could be uh, meditating on the causes of our degradation that's one point meditating on the causes of our degradation are degradation so it's not his personal grievance or his fault in um one of my favorite amadou pieces which was a lecture that he gave to ergonia uh on the symbolism of genesis the actually esotericism of genesis which this uh falls a lot into he talked about um that there's four tenants that are components of pretty much the Elucoan mythos. One is that there's a threefold uh, power, uh, which is, well, threefold godhead. Uh, the three and one, not one and three, uh, is how it's kind of said in the catechism. Um, so it there's another area in there where it's getting into the triplicity, the trifavim wood. I'm pretty sure I know what it is, but um, the causes of our degradation are are very important to realize. So the second tenet is that this threefold expression gave us our soul which is the uh, reflection and image of this, uh, what the Alucoans call quadruple power. Um, <clears throat> the next one is, is that there was a fall. You have to agree in Alucoan language that there was a fall. Um, so that happened. <laughs> and then the fourth tenet is that there is a uh, divine representation that is showing us a path to reintegration from the fall. So when it says meditating on the causes of our degradation in the book Liver Vert, uh, and this is in the section called Reconciliation Operation for Two Penitents Roqua and an Operating Roqua. Very serious stuff. The Operation of Reconciliation um is known uh to those who know but it's it's a different thing so this is uh part of the vision that you have uh the the vision from the chose uh when you are doing this kind of operation of reconciliation so uh when suddenly my eyelids grew heavy there's the somnia ambulism uh, because you're forced in this position to be pretty uh, vigilant with your prayer work. Um, I was forced to sit at the foot of a tree and yield to this soporific condition during which my, my heated imagination, very important, led me to this singular dream that I have never forgotten. 
and then we go into the dream. So this Saturnian, I, I, I actually went further and I gave my own commentary based on uh, the psychic energy that's rolling around in this representation of the dream itself. But that's the only part in quote unquote real life uh, that we wanted to analyze. The rest is a dream. So uh, the this is what I have found uh, to be, um, it's a twofold process. One is the winding in and the corporalization of these forces. The other is the unwinding of what happens when you have the beatific vision. So when you're in the penitent phase, you're in the degradation, really churning through the wheel, trying to get out of uh, what the hell happened. And when you're in the triumphant uh, operative Roqua phase, you're helping somebody that's in that state. Very important. So uh, there's, there's a vision. Um, now, you can read it if you have Levi Vert. I'm not going to plagiarize and read word for word the vision. Um, but what happens is is that this uh, penitent Roqua ends up in a forest with a bunch of terrifying and kind of psych psychotropic uh, plants around. That's an important part too. Um, as you'll see, I may or may not release it. I don't know if I'm going to do so because this was a pretty intense uh, analysis. I analyzed the registry of the 2400 names of the Elu Cohen. Uh, and I did so under the sigils. I did so under the characters. I mean, I put a lot of work into this. It was like five years of work. Um, and what we found is that often what happens is these images that are popping up in the 2400 in the view of the scrying or operative Elu Cohen are uh, drug-induced visions. I, I know it hurts feelings, but they are actually drug-induced visions. And I found this through P.D. Newman who is a scholar and, uh, you know, I've gotten some internal uh, representations about Newman, but I think he's awesome. Um, he helped me with this really, really well. And I did an essay on it, which uh, is private. And I don't know if I'm going to release it in a book. I was going to release it in the uh, secret Roqua book that I was going to publish uh, through Lulu, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not, which includes new Cohen instruction from France uh, manuscripts. I used AI to transcribe uh, new Cohen instruction, and pretty much it is about this. So this is why I'm talking about it. Um, it's very sermon-like. You're not going to see a bunch of operative stuff here. However, it does give the uh, person who's doing this process a framework and overview of what's going on. So new Cohen instruction was recommended by Amadou and um, I fortunately got it from, I think it was the BMG, the, the Bibliothèque Municipale Grenoble, and they sent it to me digitally, and like I said, I got it uh, transcribed and then GPT translated. Um, so it's good enough to know what the content is in it. Now, uh, Past master uh, Rana told me that GPT is not good enough for Martinist translations because Martinist words are very technical. Now, uh, in the time of Google Translate, that was true, but GPT has grown leaps and bounds in its mass language translations. And I would beg to differ that GPT translations are pretty damn accurate. Although there's some nuance, of course, but the nuance is more to do with um, what the French would uh, 
call the adherence to the letter pretty much rather than the contextualization of the content. So for the contextualization of the content, which is not necessarily literal and literary, which is what the French language is highly built for, um, then, you know, you're going to get a good feeling uh, in virtual reality, we'll put it, uh, for this overall view. And if you know the yellow Cohen structure, you can pretty much put together where the teaching fits. So new Cohen instruction, novel Cohen uh, instruction. I forget the manuscript. Let me, is... <laughs> I just can't stop now. Uh, I think it's 4127. Yeah. Uh, our occupation, my brothers, and this earthly place of exile, where we clearly find ourselves expatriated from the heavenly homeland, must be to learn through the force of our labor our great ignorance in which we are steeped concerning the holy truths revealed to the prophets. So if you know what that is, you know what that is. It's amazing stuff. But New Cohen Instruction, uh, BMG 4127, has never been released. Um, I think Amadou did a Karaskript version. So you might be able to get a hold of it if you were a wealthy patron. Uh, but I have it. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Probably release it in a new Roqua book. Um, as I did Cohen Instructions of San Martin, and you'll be able to see that over there. Uh, I'm going to probably do a new Roqua book, which gives the doctrine of Argony, uh, a person who went through big overshadowing and psychic work in Argony. Um, her name is Marie Monsby. And she read the journals of her brother, who was a knight in the RER. Uh, her brother, I forget his name, but Monsby's brother was a member of Villermose's RER. And uh, potentially higher grades, we'll leave it at that. Uh, so beyond the CBCS, there's other grades. Uh, which the Roqua and uh, in the letters of Willermos to, uh, I think it's Kirchberger, but it could be, um, no, uh, the letters of Willermos and to his son, uh, you know, um, are about this process. I'll just leave it at that. Because I don't want to get into too big of a aha reveal to try to say I'm monetizing Elu Cohen. I'm not. This is just for the subscribers who are interested in this content. And uh, like I said, I can prattle on because I, I'm definitely researched this tradition for 20 years. Um, so I have a lot of points. Anyway, so we're going back to the vision. Uh, thanks for that little, uh, you know... Uh, excursus into the world of the yellow Cohen. Um, but I hope that you pick up 4127 because when I make it available, it's never been available. Uh, new Cohen instruction. I don't think Karascript offers it. I mean, you could be one of those private collectors with a copy, but um, usually those people are very few and far between. And uh, they are not releasing the translation. I mean, I... I had uh, been at Grandmaster Rana's house before he passed, uh, which, you know, we shouldn't speculate on how we passed. No one really knows. So anything that you might have read in a book about Grandmaster Rana, about his temperament or anything, was so different um, than the people who actually knew him. He was a super loving guy. Uh, he was a really, really inclusive man. He... He made you feel included if you hung out with him. So anyway, I was at his house ready for the international gathering. And uh, I was going to sleep in the room with the files of the Elu Cohen. 
And, uh, you know, I told the GM, I was like, I can't sleep in that room, man. I'm going to snoop around. <laughs> and he was like, bro, uh, you don't have to. I was like, thanks for taking this temptation away. Because had I slept in that room with the big file cabinet, and it was massive. I mean, about as tall as I am. I'm 6'4". So it was about a six-foot file cabinet full of an archivist material, which I don't know what happened in his passing um, but our new GM is probably going to be really uh, uh, very uh, structured about the release and the codification of those materials. Um, anyway, uh, he had massive amounts. And, you know, we were part of the Society of Martinez de Pasquale. So I'm not an amateur at this work. And I, I'm not trying to talk myself up. It's just um, me and Rana worked on some of this stuff and... Uh, he, he thought that some of these uh, analysis that I was doing were, were dead on. Um, no pun intended. Rest in peace, bro. Uh, so, in the vision, uh, you have this encounter with horror, which is kind of like a dark night of the soul. Um, you're going through, if you've paid attention to the exercises on being reintegrated, you're going through a release of the trauma contents in your etheric body. So Jupiter comes in and says, hey, uh, be courageous, you know, um, take care of this, be brave, you know. And it reminds me of the old biblical adage, be not afraid. You know, when the when the good consciousness, the Agathos daemon comes, there's an overall mentality of just be not afraid. Don't be afraid of this overall thing that's <laughs> uh, that's uh, making itself known to you. So there's a vision of the sacred that happens in this image, uh, and then a revelation of the sacred. Uh, so the vision of the sacred happens when uh, the penitent goes to the temple. Uh, now this is very indicative of the Elucoan itself, which you have the outer gate, uh, you have the doors of the temple, you have the temple, and then you have the Holy of Holies. So uh, as you go through the grades of the EC, you'll start to get into these overall mythopoetic states that they're talking about in this vision. Uh, and this is for sure Roqua material. Um, because there's a revelation of the sacred, and then there's an emergence of beauty and compassion. And uh, Plotinian language, Plotinus, uh, this is the one, the beautiful, and the good. So this overall understanding is what happens to you in the work. Your individual ego, your fears, your apprehensions, your feeling of being personally attacked, blah, 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 gets uh, released. And you get an overall vision of the... Uh, of the rebus and um then you are awakening and integrating this vision which mind you Grainville said stayed with him his whole life uh so the the structure of what happens here is exactly the process you go through when you're going through the uh, Lucoan. When you go through the bands, you go through the blue band, the black band, the red band, the green band, and then the white band and Roqua. Uh, I mean, I don't know if the white band and Roqua are the same, so take it for what it's worth. But new, uh, new Cohen instruction definitely talks about the inner work. Um, it's probably the missing treaties of reintegration that Martinez would not release to the penitent Roqua that were reading the treaties of reintegration. So um, it's really good. It comes kind of in the language of Abbe Forney. Like I said, it's very sermon-esque. But it's a really, really good document, um, which, uh, you know, I might, I might sell as an individual book. Because on Patreon, you can buy individual posts. So I might give 
a lecture on uh, New Cohen instruction and sell it as a PDF book so we have it for perpetuity and that will include the French transcription as well so if you're like me and you don't trust any of these archivists you can go back in time and I'll give you a facsimile a French transcription and an English translation to the best of my ability in that uh, series of lectures as a PDF that you can buy um, for the English, uh, it won't be that expensive. But I do have to cover the cost of this kind of research um, because let me tell you, these volumes of the George Courts, there or there, <laughs> are not cheap. I had to buy them from France. They are not sold to America. So I had to buy them from France from a specialty bookshop in order to even have enough information to present to you on the operation for the penitent roqua and the operating roqua uh which is this vision this vision that we're talking about so in george quartz's commentary this that's half of the information i wanted to give on the vision dream and good job reddit poster for um finding this in libre vert you know i read it multiple times but i didn't find this i you know we have the secret instructions of the Elu Cohen that uh, Rana gave me the very first copy. I have number one uh, it's signed, and it was what was called in uh, publishing language the proof copy, meaning before there were any releases, it was number one. So um, I'm really proud of that. I miss my bro a lot. Uh, so in George Quartz's commentary, um, there's, uh, an interplay between the cosmic forces. Um, but he talks about some really awesome stuff, um, which I'll probably make available to my subscribers in English, because like I said, these books are really hard to get. It's in volume three of the George Court's Livre Vert, which I've talked to the powers that may be, and they will not incorporate George Quartz. They know about him, um, but when I had the conversation, I was just asked for free resources, and I said, use George Quartz to make your book. And the person was like, yeah, not so much. And so I don't know. I don't know why people aren't using him. Maybe there's an inner order political view that I don't understand. But um, he was definitely an SII and uh, very, very important to the Liver Vert tradition. He, he did an analysis based on the original French. He was in the French man. Uh, he wrote a three volume commentary, which also includes the circles and its operation, uh, which wasn't part of Liver Vert originally, um, but. It's a really, really good volume series. If you can read French, uh, definitely do your own podcast on George Quartz if you can get it to America. But um, they are amazing books. Anyway, so this is the commentary that George Quartz gives on the actual vision dream. Um, he says the text has been entirely crossed out. It does not call for any particular comment except that the dream describes the passage from a world that is particularly hostile to humanity in a very dark vision to the discovery of a temple which is its mausoleum or tomb of truth and an idyllic vision where this truth is reborn in the form of an androgynous being. The Masonic symbolism is evident. The passage from the world of death to the world of light from the profane world to the sacred world, with the discovery of a mystical temple dedicated to truth, after the vision of a chaotic universe, the temple is flooded with fire and light, making an animated statue appear, an androgynous being, almost a divine creation, on the two broken columns of classical masonry. This section is called Fire and Creation. The esotericism of fire and light remains a permanent principle in esoteric societies. First of all, how was the world created? In many traditions, the formation, evolution, and finality of the world is a mystery, partic partially evoked in various ways. 
The universe is created by a principle, an idea, a thought, a force outside of any concept and without any reason other than the will of a divinity, a force, a thought leading to a creation. According to Martinez de Pasquale, the animations bring about existences, spirits, and beings for the glory of the divinity. The original breath, the creative principle, the idea, the thought, a god, exists even before all existence. Existing brings forth different worlds and successive creations. From the world's egg, the Big Bang, the hierarchy of worlds, the existence that emerged from nothingness, there are constant terms. A creation brings forth physical and spiritual elements. A movement is created in time and space. Life appears according to complex modalities with man as the central point, though this theory is currently being challenged. This section is called the central fire. Energy, the force of fire, is conceived through the principle of fire and heat. Visible through the elements, the stars, the sun, these are the visible aspects of the fire principle. The sun is the first to center of the world. Its absence brings cold and death. Hence, cults arose either to sustain rituals to bring back the sun each day or to contemplate worlds of light and life opposed to the worlds of ice and death. Long before sophisticated cults, light and fire formed the foundation of religions, rituals, and practices where fire was venerated, maintained, and preserved for powering the continuation of life. Fire also comes from the sky through the sun which burns and lightning during storms. The moon by its light reflects the sun. Fire comes from the earth when fire devastates elements or from the center of the world where fire is maintained by fire beings, salamanders, catonic beings, dwarves, dragons, near volcanoes and hot springs. Fire becomes an organized force that gives power because it can be tamed. According to the law of correspondences, fire is linked to our body heat, to life, and symbolizes fertility, creation. No one can work in alchemy if they do not master the different fires. According to the stanza of Zien, which is by Blavatsky, used by the Theosophists and Blavatsky, the secret of fire lies in the second letter of the sacred word. Stanza 1. The breath and air are a second principle, and forms are created. Water, the third principle, withdraws as in Genesis to form the earth. What was molten, cools, solids appear, followed by rocks, crystals, the variety of minerals and metals. Matter, water, and fire are united through sound or the vibration of cosmic fire. Thus, everything exists, from the stars of the galaxies swirling in space to the earthly matter organized in time and space. Creation, continuing its evolutionary path, brought forth life in the past and made it evolve in its complexity. For theosophy, the perfect form and evolved life are put in place by cosmic will, governed by finalities. This thought is hardly accessible to us as the ancient light will become pure light again in billions of years when our worlds will transform into pure light with the sun exploding. Cosmic fire hardens all elements and forms, but this cosmic fire radiates beneath the surface as life moves within the forms. Fires multiply within multiple envelopes, wearing away forms, burning in centers with flames that have multiple layers. The fires of spirits through their arrangement, disposition, and variation hold the secret of the wheel of life, which itself turns within the form. The essence is found in the intimate heart of the fire that is hidden, the fire under the bushel, and can only be known through radiation and what shines forth. It is only when the blaze is extinguished and one no longer feels the heat that man can know the fire, which is stanza 12. For Martinez, however, fires have significance. Their meaning allows access to the vision of the world of spirits. Operations then aim to find these spirits, to make the good spirits appear, and to understand their meaning through their own fires and colors during the transitions. Neither God nor the principle is light. 
although he is called light and life, no more than he appears from darkness. Just as Akasha is not black, God is neither this nor that. Martinez is careful not to say that God is light or to suggest that there is a knowable God. It is the mystery of all mysteries. He proposes to rediscover the divine world, which is separated from us by the axis of central fire, where only divine spirits gravitate with their powerful hierarchies through the regeneration and reintegration of our primal faculties. So you see, GPT is capable of rendering Martinist and Alucoan terms. The ancients did not attempt to explain the beginning, nor did they consider a big bane or an expanding universe turning back upon time. Instead, they contemplated creation from a space without time. Martinez states, before time, this is from the Treaties of Reintegration. The simplest expression of manifestation is to say that creation is hidden in the thought of God, in a nothingness that is not nothingness, in the very absence of time and space. Thus, nothing we can know exists in the divine immensity, which includes everything that can come into existence. The spirits, as Martinez also names them, existing without truly existing, and declares in the beginning. Even in the Hebrew tradition, the word for God, Elohim, is considered as non-existent. Though the root Aleh means that all that is before creation which we cannot conceive, and which is not yet light, as it has not yet manifested. Aleh, the antecedent of Elohim, is neither light nor darkness, but simply that. Creation, fire, and light, according to the Zohar. I'm smiling because I'm really happy we get to hear this in English from the French. The addition of the term me, am I, in the Zohar and Kabbalah refers to a point simply called the thought of the eternal. This thought reverses itself to manifest and becomes I am, which when added to Aleh, meaning this, forms Elohim. Generally translated as God and then as the gods, thus the eternal creates, but at this stage in his thought, Aleh does not yet create our own creation nor its own darkness, the darkness, nor its own light. The spirit hovers above the water, since it is neither this nor that. Creation has no consistency nor existence. As mysterious as this true beginning is, so too is the existence of something that is neither this nor that, which exists before all creation. This mystery extends to the start of creation itself. This is why the ancients say that these two elements, darkness and light, are truly incommunicable secrets, and any speculation on the origin or the beginning of creation can only be vain speculation or assumption about how the thought of the eternal could want a creation for his own glory. The second concept includes the idea of a future creator God and the thought of a God that could form the project of creation. After the virtual beginning, the emergence of the primordial chaos must follow for the creation process, which relies on intuitions creating the new mystery of the separation and emergence of the heavens and the earth. But at that moment, neither space nor time exists yet. It is no longer that which is, and not yet that which comes. It is an intermediate state, where the ancients say that God's thought organizes itself according to a first day, the Bindu of the Hindus in a cup, or the Visarga, the seed. Later, a stream of Kabbalists would introduce letters and numbers that will organize creation. The formation of these letters will give birth to both darkness and light. The Sefer Yetzir contemplates this creation through the relationship of letters. The letter, symbolically chosen, represents both the upper and lower worlds in view of blessings and forms, the very foundation and creation by the mouth, the letter B. This force is designated by the same letter, while the second letter, Aleph, which was originally the first, represents the unity of all creation and the upper and lower worlds. 
Creation happened not in four directions, but in six directions. A more accurate terminology would be to say that it organizes itself like a wheel or a carousel where there is no direction. For directions go back and forth in all senses, everywhere and nowhere, in fact. The ancients could not envision a universe that does not expand, present everywhere instantaneously. Yet the concept of proximity and distance through immeasurable cycles exists, with expansions and retractions and immense cycles. Another image is to say the mystery of Genesis is conceived by a creative principle whose works are hidden in the visible and invisible worlds. The point that cannot be known where everything that can exist exists is the essential center that our mind seems unable to conceive except through approximation and speculations based on abstractions. With the writings of Hermes Trismegistus, this notion will show that an approach remains possible because what is above is like what is below for the miracle of one thing. The reality of creation is then hidden in potentiality, and to no production, the Kabbalists envision the calling by name, that is, the emission of the vibrations corresponding to the formation of the elements. By simplification, it is the production and or emission of letters through various processes, their combinations producing species. When the letters appear before Elohim, who is no longer this, they are no longer hidden but must now be contemplated, each according to its role. Humans have the ability to acquire the same knowledge through Kabbalistic studies, which are very difficult and ultimately transcend the intellect leading to contemplation. Once again, Martinez simplifies because the operations, the planes, create worlds and directions in connection with the planetary energies where Saturn acts as the conductor. It is a small universe that the practitioner has before their eyes or constructs. Failing to understand the importance of this connection or calling upon the forces of the universe and the necessary protection when handling these spirits or energies, most groups have collapsed, overwhelmed by certain phenomena that are indeed real and physical. The next is creation of the world according to the Hindus. You see, GPT does perfectly well with French translation. The ancient Hindus conceived the idea that when Alkasha illuminates, it becomes Prakasha, the light, which corresponds to the notion of and there was light. The term Kha means zero, but when combined with the first letter A, which forms the beginning of the word Akasha, that, it is linked to Shunya, the initial point, the seed. The Hindus add dik, the word as in Genesis, and vioma, the air, the breath, whose esoteric result will produce akasha. The latter is also the result of kapusha, which causes the rupture of the ether of the ancients, which is not merely a space, but a component of the illuminated void. It is then said that its color is that of emptiness, the colorless, which is a color without color, allowing the point, the root of the sky, the top of the world, the sky of the Hebrews. This is not, in fact, the light we know, but an absence of color, like immortal light. Bindu, in India, is the point, the drop, the seed, the science, and its center has no limits. It contains the continuation of all numbers, Bindu is symbolized by a square with a point in the center, a circle with a dot in the center, or a zero, which is not nothingness, nor absence, but a seed of everything that exists. Hear me with those who have ears to hear. When applied to humans, it is the center of the heart, and in Buddhism it becomes the lotus with a thousand petals, the key to universal wisdom which connects with Vajra, both lightning and absolute light and wisdom. The term God, Martinez substitutes, the eternal who continuously creates through infinite emanations. Martinez does not hesitate to affirm that God and his creation are inseparable, even if God cannot be known 
and that creation is good for humanity and was made for humans to glorify their creator. In the same way, beings are like him for his glory alone. See chapter 1, volume 2 on the spiritual and temporal creation of emanated spirits. This is in George Quartz's commentary. So I'll do that video next. I mean, we got to hear it, right? <laughs> Martinez also uses another Kabbalistic principle, namely that the mysteries of Genesis and creation are first conceived by a creative principle, the eternal, whose works are hidden in the visible and invisible worlds. In a dualistic aspect, there is the creation of above and below, but according to the word Barashit in the six directions, which is a mystery to explain the emergence of creation everywhere at once, at the beginning, where above is below and vice versa, at the same time, like a kind of hologram, which discursive thought cannot grasp. Oh, there's so much commentary here. It's so good. All of creation and then hidden in potentiality and the spirits evoked by Martinez have no other purpose than to reveal to us an operative knowledge. Creation is no longer merely hidden, but discovered and contemplated through internal communication. As long as creation remains intimately hidden, it does not exist for our senses. As long as creation is enclosed, it is like a different palaces of the Kabbalists, unknown. The doors must be opened. And this is not necessarily insignificant when the initiate changes planes. Once liberated, creation unfolds majestically according to Kabbalistic tradition known as that of Moses. He possesses a scepter on which all the letters of creation are engraved. Each of the 42 letters transcribes a particular light of different color. And all these letters form the sacred name. Once this word is obtained, after discovering the fire of the burning bush, Moses is transfigured, revealing his body of glory. If y'all understand what I'm reading, you'll know that there's some really cool stuff here. And I'm going to give this video away for free. Martinez did not use the same concept of Hebrew letters as he was not a Kabbalist, but he proposes to us access to the transcendental to light and fires through operations that include planetary energies, numbers, and spirits capable of teaching us all these mysteries. Thus, the principle of darkness enters into the bosom of light and the internal fire forms a glory for reintegration and regeneration. So that is George Quartz's commentary on the vision dream from Liver Vert. I hope you all enjoyed being reintegrated. Uh, there's so much in this particular podcast uh, episode that you might want to re-listen to it. Bye.